G'day mates. We're about to dive into something a bit different today. Something lurking beneath the surface of those sunny Aussie beaches and adorable quokkas. We're talking about the law, but not the lookout for falling pianos kind. This is about the hidden forces that have shaped Australia's legal system. Stuff most people wouldn't find out even after a year of binge watching rake. You see, the law isn't some magical scroll that appeared one day. It's a messy, evolving beast, carrying the baggage of history on its back. And in Australia, like many places, that history involves a powerful player, the Roman Catholic Church. Now before you switch the channel, this isn't about bashing religion. It's about understanding how deeply intertwined it is with the levers of power even in a place as seemingly laid back as Australia. We're going to peel back the layers on this onion, looking at how centuries old ideas about law and morality still echo in Aussie courtrooms today. And trust me, it's more interesting than watching paint dry on Ayers Rock. Though to be fair, I've never actually seen that. But here's the thing, once you see these hidden influences, you can't unsee them. And that awareness, my friends, is the first step to making sure the laws actually reflect the values of the people they're meant to serve. So, grab a Tim Tam and settle in. Things are about to get interesting. Now, I'm not talking about the Pope popping down to Bondi Beach for a surf. This influence is way more subtle, woven into the very fabric of Western legal thought. You see, after the Roman Empire went the way of the dinosaurs, the Catholic Church picked up the slack, becoming a major player in Europe for centuries. They weren't just ringing bells and handing out communion wafers though. They were shaping laws, influencing kings, the whole shebang. And guess what? When the Brits decided to set up shop in Australia, they brought their legal system along for the ride. A system steeped in, you guessed it, centuries of Catholic Church influence. This wasn't some malicious plot, mind you. It's just how things were done back then. But it's important to remember this historical context because it helps explain why certain values and assumptions are baked into the system. For example, the Church's stance on things like marriage, family, and even the role of government, all left their mark. And those marks haven't magically disappeared just because Australia became a modern, secular country. They linger in the background, sometimes subtly, sometimes not so much, shaping how laws are interpreted and applied. Now, some of you might be thinking, so what? Australia's not a theocracy. We've got freedom of religion. And you're right, you do. But the influence we're talking about is deeper than that. It's about the underlying assumptions, the unspoken biases that can creep in when a legal system is built on a foundation of religious doctrine. Think of it like this. Imagine building a house on a foundation designed for a completely different structure. Sure, you can try to make it work, but there are always going to be compromises, weird angles, and maybe even some structural instability. That's kind of what we're dealing with here. Take for example, the way the legal system views concepts like morality and natural law. These are often rooted in religious teachings, and while they've evolved over time, the underlying assumptions can still impact things like social policy, discrimination laws, and even how certain crimes are punished. It's not about saying these laws are inherently bad or good. It's about recognizing that they're products of a specific historical and religious context. And that context might not always align with the values of a modern diverse society like Australia. So how does this all play out in the real world? Let's look at an example. Australia has been grappling with the issue of same-sex marriage for years. Now regardless of your stance on the issue, 
It's clear that the debate was heavily influenced by religious arguments, often framed in terms of traditional marriage and the sanctity of the family unit. These arguments, while completely valid in a religious context, have no place in a secular legal system that's supposed to treat all citizens equally. But because of the historical influence we've been talking about, these religious ideas had a seat at the table, shaping the debate and influencing public opinion. And this isn't just about marriage equality. This underlying tension between religious values and secular law pops up in all sorts of areas, from abortion rights to euthanasia to education policy. It's a constant reminder that the ghosts of history are still very much present in the Australian legal system. The Global Puzzle from WEF to UN. Now let's zoom out for a sec because this isn't just an Australian thing. All around the world, people are waking up to the fact that powerful institutions from the World Economic Forum to the United Nations are often accused of pushing agendas that don't always align with the best interests of everyday people. Whether it's concerns about corporate influence at the World Economic Forum or worries about unelected bureaucrats at the United Nations, there's a growing sense that these global players are out of touch more concerned with abstract ideals than the real-world consequences of their policies. And you know what? Sometimes those concerns are totally valid. We need to be able to scrutinize these institutions, hold them accountable and make sure they're actually serving the people, not the other way around. Waking up down under. So, what does this all mean for our mates down under? It means it's time for a good old-fashioned reality check. Australians are known for their no-nonsense attitude, their willingness to call a spade a spade. Well, it's time to bring that same energy to the way we think about our legal system. We can't just blindly accept things, because that's how it's always been done. We need to ask tough questions about where these laws come from, what assumptions they're based on, and whether they're actually serving us in the 21st century. This isn't about being disrespectful to the past. It's about respecting ourselves enough to demand a legal system that reflects our values, our diversity, and our vision for the future. Taking back the outback, a user's guide. All right, so we've done a lot of complaining. Now let's talk solutions. What can the average bloke or Sheila do to reclaim their power? Well, for starters, we need to get informed. Read up on the history of the Australian legal system. Learn about the influence of religion, both past and present. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be to spot those hidden biases and challenge them. Next, get involved. Join a local advocacy group, write to your MP, or even just start a conversation with your mates. The more people are aware of these issues, the more pressure we can put on our leaders to create a fairer, more just system. And finally, don't underestimate the power of simply asking questions. When you hear a law being debated, ask yourself, whose interest does this serve? Is it fair to everyone? Does it reflect the kind of society we want to live in? The power of knowing and caring. Here's the thing about knowledge. It's like Vegemite, a bit of an acquired taste. But once you get it, you get it. And once you understand how these hidden forces work, you start to see them everywhere. You start to see how they influence everything, from the news you consume to the politicians you vote for. But knowledge without action is like a kangaroo without a pouch, kind of pointless. That's why it's so important to channel that awareness into something productive. Support organizations fighting for legal reform. 
have those awkward conversations with your family and friends, make some noise. Because here's the kicker. A democracy only works if the people actually understand and participate in the system. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of blokes in suits making decisions in a room. And we all know how that usually turns out. G'day to a fairer future. So there you have it. A crash course in the hidden history of the Australian legal system. It's not always pretty. But hey, neither is a drop bear. But just like those furry little nightmares, these issues aren't going away on their own. It's up to us, the citizens of this sunburnt country, to shine a light on these hidden influences and demand a system that's fair dinkum for everyone. Remember, the law isn't some immutable force of nature. It's a human creation. And like all human creations, it's flawed and constantly evolving. And with a little bit of knowledge, a healthy dose of skepticism, and a whole lot of Aussie grit, we can shape it into something we can all be proud of. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to find a Tim Tam and contemplate the existential dread of a legal system built on centuries of religious dogma. Just another day in the land down under.